Hey everyone. I'm Kate Kinsman. I'm a faculty at our high school. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about our one of our teaching principles, which is to use multi-sensory approaches and how some of us at Landmark are trying to use multi-sensory approaches in the remote setting. So again, one of our teaching principles is to use the multi-sensory multi approaches, which most of us think of as visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. That is definitely how we think about it at Landmark, but we also think about it through um, the lens of language domains. So in our classes, we are also trying to make sure students are in each class, you know, speaking and listening, reading and writing. And those language domains line up nicely with multi-sensory instruction. So we, we, we are Google School. So one of the applications that we're using is Jamboard and that helps us get students um, both reading and writing. And in some cases that allows us to really activate that kinesthetic element of writing if students are using the trackpad or a um, stylus to write. So I'm just gonna show you some examples. But before I do that, in case you're not familiar with Jamboard, I'll tell you how to get there. So when you're in your Google account, you wanna click on, typically in Google Drive, you wanna click on the new button and then in addition to showing all the usual stuff, right? Like we often go, I think to Google Docs or Slides. If you click on the arrow for more, you'll see a lot of other options in the Google Suite and Google Jamboard is one of them. Or instead, if you want to, you can go to the waffle up at the top of the screen and just go to the app directly in that menu. So Google Jamboard. It's meant to work hand in hand with a smart display, but even if you don't have a smart display, even if we're working from home, um, it can still be a great tool. It's again, free through the Google suite. And in some ways it can act like a whiteboard. It's not quite the same as a whiteboard. There are some limitations, but it's, it's close. So the layout of Google Jamboard they always start like many Google Docs do. They'll say like untitled jam. So I like to title it. You can pick your background. I usually stick with white, but I know a lot of math teachers are using the graphing background to, to mimic graph paper. Up top, you can create multiple pages or slides within a jam. And you've got your toolbar over here on the left. So the toolbar. You can pick the thickness of the marker and the color. I typically use the most thick option. It's actually called the highlighter option, but it, for me, it's the easiest to write because I don't have a stylus. So I'm, if I'm writing, I'm writing using my trackpad. Also, there's an eraser. You can erase whatever you do. Um, you can select different content. The sticky note is one of my favorites. You can choose the color uh, and it, you type in this case. You can add images if you'd like. You can add shapes, text box, and then a laser that you can make a line that slowly disappears once it's drawn. So to really get the true kinesthetic element, you'd want to be using the marker option with your students. It can work well for students that do have styluses, but if they don't, if you don't, it can be a more challenging feature because it requires you to write on your trackpad, which can be tricky. So in many cases, students are opting just to do the sticky note or the text box option because it's a little bit easier to use. So I'm gonna talk you through some examples of how I've used it. This was for a longer presentation. There are a lot of examples here but I'm just gonna take you through a few of them. So for the first option, sorry, I'm just popping out of my presentation so I can see the other tabs. You could potentially use a jam as a warm up for your class. 
And again, often when we're doing these, we're trying to, for our warm up activities, we're trying to have students activate and start thinking about what's coming up next in class as a way, hopefully, to alleviate some of those working memory demands later on if we're then posing you know, the same question to them for discussion. So one way to use it is you can create a, like this could mimic like a spectrum activity in the classroom where students might be walking from one corner of the room to the other. You could have agree in one corner, disagree, somewhat disagree, and agree somewhat. So these stickies you pre-create in advance, and as the teacher, you might create the X in the middle in advance. But then when students enter it, they just type their first name on a sticky, and you may pose a question to them. And then in response to that question, you can see their sticky notes with their names move to the box which demonstrates that they agree, disagree, somewhat agree with the statement. So this can be a really nice warm up activity. So initially I had students agree, disagree with an activity, and then I wanted them to react to a specific question, again, to prepare them for an upcoming discussion we were gonna have. So in this case, we had watched the social network. So I was asking them, what is the most important lesson or like the theme to take away from the social network? And I wanted them to write it in a complete sentence, which they did, which is great. And the key here is you may want them to sign their name or put their initials because as the teacher, even if you're the one that created the jam, you can't necessarily tell who wrote what. So that's a little bit unlike some of the other Google products. That's why you'll see some student names here. So they wrote a complete sentence responding to what they felt the theme of the movie was, and then they signed their name or their initials. That's one example of how we've used some jams on the Landmark High School campus. Another example, and this was also tied to the movie, but this could work really well for literature is um, looking at the different you know, types of conflict in a story and having students brainstorm. So in this case, this one student tied to the movie felt like a character versus character conflict was Erica versus Mark. And then they wrote, Erica breaks up with Mark and doesn't want to see him again. So again, this student was, you know, stated what the conflict was and then gave an example of like further elaborated on what they meant when they stated Erica versus Mark is a character versus character conflict. Another way to use uh, Jamboards is to create timelines. It can be a great tool for that. And as you can see here, the background is the graph paper graph for those math teachers out here. That can be a great tool. Um, so you could do timeline for events in the film. Uh, also in literature, I've done the plot line, like so the spiky chart, you know, beginning, rising action, conflict, falling action, and then the conclusion. So you can do it for a timeline activity. And then I wanna show you some tutorial examples. So I think in this way, we're using it both on our high school campus and on our elementary middle school campus. So some teachers are doing uh, syllabication, the dot and grab method, using slides or Jamboard. So the nice thing about Jamboard, so as the teacher, you know, I put the word accidental in here. And then the student can grab the pen. And in this case, you don't need to worry about handwriting so much. So I do encourage the use of the trackpad or a stylus for this. Again, you may wanna grab the thickest highlighter and you can pick the color. So let's say we want it to be red. And then again, the student, you know, you can just use your, and this is again, easy enough to do with your trackpad. So you're dotting and grabbing the syllables. Another example of how we've used it in tutorial, this was a sort example. The sort is now in order, but the student arrived here with different parts of a word and they had to put, you know, put the word together and then label the prefix, the root, the suffix, and then also align the meaning, the meanings of each. 
So the teacher like preset the slide with the content and then the student was able to move it around and manipulate it. I need to unclick the highlighter again. Another example, um, just a visual to present all the sounds of the letter Y, <laughs> depending on where it may appear in the word. If you're introducing it to a student, it could just be a static slide like this. It's just a nice visual, again, using it like a whiteboard. If the student has already learned this, perhaps you're manipulating the stickies. So again, one thing that you'll just notice that I did, so the highlighter was like stuck on there for a while. And then when I went to go over here, it was trying to force me to use the highlighter and, I, and, it, and that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to move the sticky. So the way to do that is then you wanna click the arrow for the select function and then it kind of like wipes it clean. And now you can move things. Another example, you can make a visual for the G train <laughs> and at the junction here, EIY goes down <laughs> and some examples like game. If G is followed by A, it makes the G sound, G. Or if G is followed by EIY, it makes the J sound like J. Just some creative ways to potentially use it. Um, students have also they're reading into the wild, for example. In tutorial, this particular teacher put a US map there with all the cities that um, Chris McCandless is, uh, landed in and into the wild and they mapped out his journey on the map. Another way to, to use Jamboard is a pre-reading activity. So before students started to read All American Boys, they each had a slide. So this was a group class. Like, so this slide was made multiple times. So I can show you actually quickly how to do that. So let's say you have 10 students in the class. I know many of you may have up to 18. <laughs> the way to duplicate a slide so that all students could be working in it is if you click up here, expand the frame bar, you'll see how all the frames appear. And right here by All American Boys, let's say I wanted multiple copies because I had many students that I wanted to be in here at once. You can click on the plus sign on the top and then click duplicate. And then it's going to duplicate it, which is just a great quick feature. So the teacher wanted them to circle parts of the book, looking at the cover that might seem important and maybe make some predictions like why the student thinks they might be important. So again, all American is often associated with sports. So the student you know, circled all American and wrote here on the sticky box, something to do with sports question mark. So again, just this teacher was really creative and was using this jam as a way to make predictions about a text based on the cover of the book. Last example, so a way to foster uh, metacognition. So as a way to get to know students at the beginning of the year, I had, um, I had my seniors do this, but these examples are from some juniors in high school to have them draw a flow chart or diagram depicting what their writing process looks like when they're assigned an essay. So they could use any of the features of Jamboards. This was kind of a fun way to also like let the students really experiment with the Jamboard features. So I'll just show you a few responses. <laughs> um, so the student, again, he put his name and then he was, a, you know, he wrote that he was assigned it. Next thing that happened was panic. Then he read over the prompt, looked for requirements and you'll see panic and procrastinate, like procrastinate showed up in here Panic showed up in here a few times. It's awesome that he wrote turning it in. So this was like a pretty, like he took a pretty straightforward approach. He just put a bunch of sticky notes in order. Some other students got a little bit more creative. 
So she like drew a self portrait of herself as a stick figure down here in the lower left and think and is thinking, oh great, a paper. I don't want to write it. Then she's showing us her brain. She writes two days later, okay, well, I'll create a bulleted list of what is gonna happen during my paper to seem like I'm working. She's acknowledging, right? She's kind of procrastinating a little, little. she wrote to seem like I'm working. And then two nights before, she's panicking a little bit and ultimately she gets it done. So she's happy when it's over. This student did stickies, but he had a lot of he had procrastination between every step. So again, lots of different choices um, for interpretation. Like this student, she drew everything, which was really cool. So this was like how she pictured those graphic organizers that we often give them, which was awesome to see that she could recall that and share that with us. So again, Jamboard, is one of those tools It's native to the Google suite, Google for Education. So at Landmark, we've started to experiment with how to use it as a way to make our remote instruction a little bit more multi-sensory and to also make sure that students are reading and writing in each class. Thanks so much for watching.